Hey, what's guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're talking about something exciting. We're talking about the Makita 40 volt XCT Gen 2 brushless reciprocating saw. If you don't know what the difference is, the easiest difference is it includes orbital and most importantly, AVT. Yes, I will say AVT is more important than orbital. So we're going to go over this tool top to bottom. Stick with us. All right, you guys, so this right here is the GRJ02. You can buy it as a tool only, and you can buy it as a kit with the 4.0 battery. If you buy it with a kit with a 4.0 battery, it becomes GRJ02M1, all right? But this is fairly new to the US market. Um, it, it's been out maybe in other regions, at least for a while, but at least in North America, it is fairly new, okay? So you're gonna ask, what is the biggest difference between this one and the Gen 1? Well, like I mentioned, this one includes orbital action, which a lot of people care about, but most importantly, AVT. And AVT stands for anti-vibration technology. What that really means is you use some kind of technology, counterweights or whatever you wanna call it, to figure out how to reduce the vibrations to the user, reducing the T, okay? Those are two biggest differences. There are other differences, like you know they've included a, a variable speed band selection but we're going to go over all of that but before we do let's get into the marketing hype so this right here is a 40 volt xgt brushless avt cordless orbital reciprocating saw it's interesting if you look at the website it actually says recipro saw not reciprocating saw but anyways it's a cordless solution for a wide range of cutting and demolition applications it delivers the power of a 15 amp corded reciprocating saw has the uh, makita built brushless motor that delivers up to 40 percent faster cutting speed when we get to the leaderboard we can figure out what they're talking about 40 percent to right it includes avt anti-vibration technology using inter internal counterbalance system that delivers up to 50 percent less vibration we'll talk in that in a little bit it has a variable speed control dial that delivers up to zero to three thousand strokes per minute and every user's max speed to application has orbital on off and the stroke on this one is inch and a quarter as with most uh, high-end or high-capacity reciprocating saws. And just in case you didn't know, most of the other ones on the market are generally around an inch to an inch and an eighth. Large two-finger trigger refined crank crank case mechanism design has metal reinforced gear shaft and self lubricating slider for extra durability it has toolless blade chain lever for faster installation and removal of blades has a retractable blade hook weighs in at a whopping 10.7 pounds with the battery um, it has electronic blank uh, brake has a built-in dual LED system. It has the standard Makita XPT, you know, protection technology from job site dust conditions and all that kind of fun stuff. And of course, it is backed by their standard Makita three-year limited lifetime warranty. All right, so this is the tool. Let's go over this stuff really quick so we can get into the meat of the details, comparing it to some of the other reciprocating saws on the market, all right? All this black stuff here is rubber over mold, pretty standard as you have seen on other Makita tools. This part is obviously a little bit, you know, curved in. They provide more easier grip or ergonomics to the user, but all this black stuff here, everything on here that's black is rubber over mold except for this metal part right here, okay? This right here, you know, it says AVT. I feel like it has more or less uh, over mold if you want to count it that way, but this right here is the reciprocating uh, orbital on off so if you put it here that means orbital on if you put it here it's orbital off the, the lever is big enough so you can do it if you're wearing you know decent or medium sized gloves or whatnot can't speak to people with larger hands but anyways all this stuff here is pretty standard okay on the left side here or on the right side sorry uh, this right here side is a little bit different because this right here is where you include the blade clamp mechanism and as you can see this right here is the blade clamp mechanism and it does work well enough or is sized big enough such that if you are wearing gloves you can use it pretty well okay um, on this side also is the metal rafter hook and as you can see with this rafter hook it is actually concaved inwards right instead of just a straight one and I do prefer this after using it for quite a bit because if you do hang it on something this part will hang it from or stop it from falling off if it does rotate a little bit whereas some of the ones that only just go straight like this sometimes if you walk by it you tap it or whatnot it'll fall off so uh, this one actually is preferred but that is interesting there on the bottom side here uh, we'll talk not too many differences but we'll talk about some key details uh, standard with most of the Makita stick they include the gel inserts here to reduce the vibration between the battery and the tool uh, they do have metal inserts here on the battery slide rails because you know that's pretty standard for Makita stuff with a lot of vibration and they do include it pretty here so it does work pretty well uh, long-term usage I can imagine it helping in the long term right on the other side here this is the blade adjustment mechanism okay so the 
as you can see here, it comes out and you can pull the, uh, the shoe out, or sorry, shoe mechanism. You can pull the shoe out and it works pretty well. Right now it works really well because I spent about 10 minutes just blowing this thing off and wiping it down and all kinds of stuff so that it does slide. But I will go ahead and tell you, when you, after you use it and there is wood chips, metal chips, or whatever all gunked up in here, it does not slide at all. That's pretty standard on almost all reciprocating saws. Haven't seen yet one reciprocating saw with a lot of usage where this thing just slides in and out easily. So uh, that's pretty standard. But the lever here is here and it is big enough such that you can take it off with gloves, okay? There's also an eject mechanism that looks here. If you, you know, from the 19, if you grew up in the 1980s, let's say, and you're unfamiliar with this mechanism, then you probably didn't grow up in the 1980s. But I'm gonna go ahead and say, this mechanism stands for eject, okay? So if you press this mechanism, you can take the shoe completely out and that's what's going on there. We'll leave it out for just a second here. So the way that this works is it's pretty standard as you would with most Makita tools. So if you pull it up all the way, it will keep it uh, the, shoot, I can't remember what you call this thing, but the clamp mechanism unlatched so that, you know, you can put the blade in there and you slide it in, push it in, there it goes, it locks in. Blade locks in easily and if you're wondering if the blade pops out, I'll show you here real quick. You take this lever, you pull it up all the way and the blade pops out enough so that you can just pull it out, okay? It won't spit it out. In some cases, if I'm working really fast, I will see it spit out, but um, if you pull it all the way up, it look keeps the uh, knuckle open so that you can, you know, uh, lock it in. There is a case where you can pull it just enough where you can unlock it, right? And then uh, the blade comes out, but the knuckle won't stay open like right there, right? So if I put this back in, it will not go back in, right? Look, it's already closed. So uh, don't do that, just pull it up all the way and the knuckle will stay open. You probably didn't hear that, but there's a small click that tells you the knuckle stays open, okay? So that's how well that stuff really works there, all right? So on this one, they do include LEDs. As you see up here, there's two LEDs up in here. Uh, that stuff works pretty well, but as you can see, this entire uh, shaft mechanism that goes back and forth is in case such that it doesn't stick out by any means. And I do really appreciate this because if you've used reciprocating saws a lot, anything that requires or anything that helps you change blades hot blades easy is very helpful so uh, people that use a lot of reciprocating saws uh, will appreciate that so on the other side here as you can see here it will not go back in unless you press and hold the eject mechanism all right and then it will allow you to go in and out pretty easily okay so uh, on the top here, we cover this, but this is right here is the variable speed dial okay uh, this is interesting because it goes all the way from zero to uh, five uh, five, which gives you up to about 3,000. So this is the band selector. No matter which band you're in, this uh, big trigger here will allow you to control the variable speed of that band, right? So the top part band selector here is pretty much the top speed stroke per minute that you will be able to get out of this variable speed trigger. This right here is a lockout mechanism. Um, we'll go ahead and show you that real quick before we bring in the other tool to kind of compare it to. Watch this variable speed trigger and you'll see how it goes, right? Here we go. All right, so now let's go to variable speed mode five, right? Or band selector five, here we go. And there you go. So the variable speed works really well, as you would imagine. I uh, haven't had any issues with it, okay? So now let's go get the GRJ01, the first gen XGT saw. And that's here, here we go. As you can see here, let's just stack it up like this so you can see it pretty well. The one on the bottom is the gen one and the one on the, two, on the top is the gen two. As you can see, it looks pretty similar, okay? Let's go over the quick differences here. So if you look at it this way, let me see, is this better? Um, if you look at it this way, the way you can kind of tell uh, the gen one and gen two easily apart is the gen two here obviously has, a, it's a little bit thicker here. Uh, the gen one is a little bit smaller here. The front looks very similar, but there's a small difference that we'll go ahead and point that out. Um, the other part here is rafter hook here is the same. The gen one does not have the variable speed uh, selector band. The gen two does. The gen one has a selector band lockout switch mechanism all combined up here. That kind of lets you select, you know, lock out, which means doesn't do anything. Go in the low or high, right? The gen two has the lockout mechanism where you can't do any anything or you can just you know select the band okay that's from the top if you go up here from the left side obviously um, this one doesn't have orbital this one has orbital gen 2 has abt this one does not other than that this side is pretty much exactly the same okay moving on to the left side here 
Uh, moving on the left side here, besides, you know, AVT marketing embl emblems and, you know, hype and all that kind of fun stuff. What you see here is the blade change mechanism has remained the same. The uh, shoe adjustment mechanism has remained pretty much the same. Um, on this one, the shoe you can take completely on off without having the eject button. Uh, but on this one, Gen 2, they did include the eject button. Maybe people were, you know, trying to adjust it too far out and then just kept taking it fully off. So maybe they did that, I don't know why. Um, but that's what's really there. The, uh, what do you call this? The raptor hook mechanism has stayed pretty much exactly the same. Um, and this one also has the uh, metal rail inserts here as you would expect. And so does the Gen 2. Other than that, the Gen 2 is just a little bit heavier, right? A little bit bigger, as you can see, has more features, right? So that's what you're really getting there. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it compares to with the Haikoki or the Matabo HPT. Um, 36 volt multi-volt reciprocating saw okay so this one right here is the metabo hpt you know the green one as you can see from the top the metabo hpt looks a little bit bigger or thicker in case you want to look at it that way right but the thing that gets me about the metabo hpt saw is there is no uh, easy blade clamp or blade change mechanism in order for you to change the mechanism you have to put your hand in between here and then rotate this knuckle to uh, do it. So it's kind of like the Milwaukee Fuel Super Sawzall, right? You kind of have to hold that knuckle open, put the blade in and stuff like that. That gets a little bit challenging, like I mentioned in this video, because sometimes the uh, shaft is pulled, inserted into here, right? Into this tunnel such that you can't get to it. So you have to pull out the trigger a couple of times, you know, just get it out so that you can pull it out. So that gets a little bit annoying sometimes. Also on this one, the blade clamp uh, mechanism knuckle actually rotates in the opposite direction as of all the other reciprocating saws we currently tested or use. Um, so that gets a little bit annoying sometimes. You just have to remember that, you know, this one rotates in a little bit different direction. This shoe um, adjustment mechanism, you know, has a bigger lever, so it's easier to use, uh, but it won't let you take it all the way out, okay? Uh, this one does obviously have orbital action as you, you know, would expect here. Um, here you go, right? This one means orbital, on, on the Matabo HPT or the Haikoki, if you press the lever up, it means orbital is off, which me means it's just straight and forward. If you press it down, it means orbital is on. On this one, on the Makita, it's orbital up, on, right? And if you press it down, it's orbital off. Other than that, it's pretty much the same here as you would expect. Uh, this one doesn't have a band selector on the top. It actually has a digital uh, switch dial that you can kind of, you know, press through a little bit here. That kind of lets you select between four different modes. Uh, this one does have a reciproc or a rafter hook that is, you know, works pretty well. Uh, this is the one I kind of talked about earlier. It just has a straight, you know, down um, shaft here so that when you hang it on something, sometimes it'll rotate and it can sometimes fall off, but you know, no big issue there, okay? So other than that, this is the uh, Haikoki Matabo HPT 36 volt. This one is the Makita GRJ02 40 volt XGT. This one right here is the Makita XGT GRJ01 first gen. So the real question is going to come down to is this one, the Matabo HPT Haikoki is currently the king of the leaderboard. Nothing can, actually maybe some things come close, but it is pretty much the best, uh, fastest, most comfortable saw. So how does the new Gen 2 Makita stack up? Let's get to it.
All right, I hope y'all caught those numbers because some of those numbers went by really fast. And just in case you didn't, we're going to do a recap anyway. So uh, we ran a brand, new, a brand new blade and a test with uh, the different batteries. What we generally do just to catch up is we run four tests, four cuts, right? And it's two by eight header lumber, uh, framing lumber with OSB in the middle with 12 16D framing nails in there, okay? So first two tests are uh, weighted tests and the second two tests are user input tests. So let's go take a look at the numbers, all right? So first we'll go ahead and take a look at the 2.5 amp hour battery and the tool okay uh, first run uh, comes out to 9.07 second run 8.85 third run 6.17 fourth run 6.57 average of the four runs comes in at 7.67 seconds all right and this battery and this tool comes in weighing at a whopping combined weight of 10.25 pounds all right that's without the blade but you know blade uh, weight here is negligible so uh, let's go take a look at what it runs with the 4 amp hour battery. So with the 4 amp hour battery and orbital off, the first run comes in at uh, 7.95, second run 7.42, third run 5.62, fourth run 5.87. Average of the four runs comes in at 6.72, okay? So the 4 amp hour battery in this tool comes in a uh, combined weight of 10.8 pounds, all right? Um, before we get into all the numbers, let's go take a look at uh, actually what the uh, 4 amp hour battery and orbital on looks like. So we ran the same test, orbital on. Uh, remember, we run all the, all the tests with the highest speed configured with the saw possible, right? So on the first run, uh, six point, or 7.62, second run 7.42, third run 6.18 fourth run 6.63 so the average of the four runs comes in at 6.96 okay so the weight obviously is the same whether you have orbital on or off all right so let's go take a look at the numbers right where does it stack up against the leaderboard or how does it compare to Godzilla if you're considering Godzilla to be green in a Metabo HPT right so with the 2.5 amp hour battery the GRJ02 uh, comes in and uh, total performance score of 7.67 which is BAM Second place, right behind the Metabo HPT Godzilla, um, which is the multi-volt 36-volt reciprocating salt with orbital on, which had a total performance uh, score of 7.14, all right? So, uh, with orbital off, the 4-amp uh, hour battery in this tool had a total performance score of 6.72, okay? So that puts this salt, bam, in first place, uh, beating out in Matavo HPT 36 volt reciprocating cell, which had a total performance score of 7.14. Okay, um, so now let's go look at what happens if orbital on. All right, so with orbital on and the 4 amp hour battery, this uh, tool has a total performance score of 6.97. All right, that puts this saw and this battery combination with orbital on in second place, knocking down the Matavo HPT uh, 36 volt one two third place okay so uh that seems a little bit weird because you would think the orbital on would you know would provide better numbers so let's go and take a look at it right so with orbital on the first two tests of the drop weighted test uh the first run uh orbital off was 7.95 and the second run with orbital on was 7.62 so with orbital on it was faster second run tied on the third run is where third and fourth run is really where it starts to get interesting, right? So uh, with the user involved test, they're just putting as much weight to get as fast as cut possible, right? So with orbital off, the third and fourth run were faster than with orbital on, okay? So just looking at the numbers there. So what's really going on there? I don't really know how they designed this thing to run with how much pressure and stuff like that, but maybe we're putting too much too much weight on it with orbital on taking that you know orbital action of you know going up and down maybe putting too much weight on it is detrimental to its effect right so uh, one thing you may want to consider there if you is if you are using orbital on you should probably use this all properly and not improperly and what I mean by that is properly is letting the saw and the tool do the work, not putting yourself in danger by, you know, just putting as much weight as possible on the tool. So yes, you could probably find a better way to get more faster cuts with orbital on, um, but we don't really try to figure out what exactly that weight is for every tool because it's probably going to be different, right? What we do is we just put as much pressure on the possible to try to get the fastest cut, which is not always going to be the case. So keep that in mind, all right? 
So let's close this out. What can we say about this tool? Obviously, this is a great tool, a huge upgrade from uh, the Gen 1. Mainly, uh, let's recap the upgrades real quick. You get variable speed band selection, you get orbital on off, and you get the, eh, if you want to consider that, the shoe comes off all the way without the eject button, right? But the most important thing is AVT. That is the most important uh, upgrade you can get, right? So AVT, anti-vibration technology, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, if you, in, in case you can't see in the videos, that the user, um, impact or the user feel of the tool is huge, okay? At least for me, um, when you are using the tool and you let the weight of the tool do the work, you are not feeling a lot of vibrations. And that's what we used to say about the Matabo HPT. It had, you know, was it like UVP or whatever they call it? The user vibration protection or something like that, or reactive force control, I don't know what they called it, but they had something that allowed the user to feel less vibrations uh, from the tool. And that's huge because user vibrations from the tool actually introduces fatigue, long-term wear, your arm gets sore, you know, you may wear out tendons, whatever, you, you can go figure that out. But the point is that um, it's more comfortable for the user, allowing the user to work more comfortably and longer, right? So so that is huge. So uh, would I go ahead and buy this tool over again? If I had, oh, okay, speaking of which, we did buy this tool, nobody sent it to it, it's not sponsored. If I had the option to choose between this tool, the Metabo or the GRJ01, obviously I would say you should buy this tool, okay? Mainly because it cuts faster, um, the benefit over the Metabo is the blade change mechanism as we've already talked about. Um, and it's more comfortable than the Matabo, which is really weird to say because we've always been saying that one was the best, right? If you had an op if you had to choose between the GRJ01 or the GRJ02, do not buy the GRJ01. It just doesn't have UVP or uh, the AVT, which is huge. That's the biggest reason. All this other stuff I could, I could probably care less about. Like I mentioned, orbital on off. I usually don't really care about it because we don't use it too much. But uh, the biggest thing here is uh, user fuel and vibration. Okay, so let's go and talk about the pricing. So this tool right now comes in uh, right around 250 to 275 depending on where you can get it from and that's tool only if you don't have xgt batteries obviously you have to buy it as a kit or you can just buy them separately and that starts to become very expensive because now you're talking somewhere close to like 400 dollars or somewhere between you know 350 to 400 dollars right so for 400 dollars you could buy two sets of the Metabo hpt multi-volt 36 volt tool because currently right now you can buy that tool um, as a kit, you really buy it as a bare tool and if you buy it from a specific place, you can get, you know, uh, full free battery and charger kit. So for 179, you can buy that tool. And if you use the rebate, you get another uh, multi-volt battery. So you get two batteries and a tool for about 179. Uh, whereas this, you only get about just the tool for 250. So uh, if you need that, that one right there is the better deal. Um, if you're not locked into any platform, obviously that's probably the better deal to get better value. But if you are in the Makita XGT platform, or if you just want the fastest cutting, reciprocating, most comfortable user, friendly saw with the most benefits and all bells and whistles, this is the one to get. That's all I can really say. So, like I said, hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any other questions or anything else like that, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day and go do some good work.